So you have installed NixOS and now want to configure it. Remember how during the installation you selected the language, time zone, desktop environment and so on? Well, based on these preferences, NixOS has just generated two files for you – configuration.nix and hardwareconfiguration.nix. The first one contains all the general options like your system settings, selected desktop environment and installed programs, while the second one has options for stuff you won't ever have to touch, like your disk partitions, swap devices and kernel modules required for your hardware. These files are called modules, so when I said that you will have one file for everything, I lied and you can in fact have as many files as you want. They are just all configured in the Nix language using the same options. So without further ado, let's finally try to edit one. And to do it, open the terminal and use the cd command to navigate to the slash etsy slash nixos directory where you will find these two files. Then let's use the sudo edit command to safely edit our configuration.nix with elevated privileges. Type in your password and you will see a file written in a special Nix language. And while it might look daunting at first glance with over 100 lines, don't worry, because most of it is just useful comments that you can safely delete after reading them, and all the remaining lines are human readable options that were generated based on your preferences during the installation. Glancing through it, you will see some options set for your time zone, your user, and even your desktop environment. But we will return to this in a moment, because the first thing we usually do on a fresh operating system is install some programs, so let's start with that. Scroll down until you find an option called environment.systempackages, and this is the place where you can put the package names of programs you want installed system-wide. Let's uncomment the line with Vim to finally have a nice editor, and while we're at it, also throw in a bunch of other programs, separating them with new lines or spaces. To discover Nix package names, you can use the search.nixos.org website, where you will find up-to-date information about all the programs packaged for NixOS, along with their versions, licenses and even descriptions. Alright, now that we have changed our configuration file, let's tell NixOS to build a new generation from it. The default NixOS editor is nano, so save the file with Ctrl O and Enter and then exit it with Ctrl X. Back to the shell, and now all we have to do is write sudo nixos-rebuild switch. Click enter, and nixos will now start downloading all the files needed to build a new generation, and then of course build it. And after it is finished running, you'll be seamlessly switched to it, and immediately get access to all the programs we just added. And if we were to restart our machine, we would also see that we now have two generations in the bootloader, the current one we just switched to, and the previous one we just left. But of course, just the packages won't do. We are on NixOS after all, so let's finally get back to the fun part and talk about setting options. We already have about 40 of them set here, and changing them is as easy as you could imagine. Even right out of the box, we can use some common sense to, for example, change your hostname, or disable printer support. But of course, a better way to set and discover options is with the help of that same search.nixos.org website where you will also find an option search tab. Let's say we want to find out more about time.timezone, and after searching for it, we will see a bunch of info including its type, an example value, and even a nice description with a link to a comprehensive list of possible time zone values. Or another example, let's look for something like services.pipewire and see that first, there is a lot more to configure than we already have set in our file, and second, that the option names in this chunk of code are slightly different from the ones on the right, or rather, they are partially merged together. This merging is a regular Nix feature made to avoid repetition, meaning if you wanted, you could also easily merge or unmerge any options yourself. And the only reason it's not done by default here, for example, is that it simply doesn't look very good. Anyway, scrolling down, we will see this user option, and this one is also worth taking a look at, as you will notice that your username is somehow a part of the option name here. How can that be possible? Let's do a quick search and find out that the actual option here is users.users, .users, and your username is just a part of its value that was merged for readability. Meaning if you wanted, you could add some more users here like this, or like this without merging. And since we are talking about users, there is actually a bunch of cool options you can set for any user, like this shell option, which we can assign to some package to have ZSH, 
new shell or fish be our user shell. How cool is that? We are both installing and setting the user shell with just one option. But you know what's even cooler? The fact that we can also configure our chosen shell in this same file. To do it, we will first have to enable it, and just look how easy it is to set shell aliases or start messages all still using the unified syntax of Nix. Beautiful. And talking about these enable options, they are actually one of rather misunderstood aspects of NixOS by many beginners. Because yes, it does make sense to enable something like Bluetooth, but why on earth would you need programs.firefox.enable when you could simply add Firefox to your system packages instead? And the reason could not be less complicated. The enable options simply provide you with everything you need to use a piece of software and let you configure it. So under the hood, programs.firefox.enable will actually add Firefox to your system packages and then also configure it using any related options you have set. Similarly, programs.git.enable will add git to your system packages and let you configure it and programs.neovim.enable will add neovim to your system packages and let you configure it. Simple as that. But if we take a look at something like services.openssh, it gets even more interesting. Because other than installing sshd and configuring it with related options, this one will not only set up and enable a systemd service for you, but also open the required firewall ports. These ports can of course be configured using a related option, which will influence both ports that sshd listens to and the firewall ports opened by the option. But as a user, you don't have to think about what happens under the hood. Your job is simply choosing the end result, and NixOS will do everything required to deliver that end result to you. And now one more example, programs.steam.enable. You would think that this one simply adds Steam to your system packages and lets you configure it, but it actually also ensures you have the required graphics drivers, sound settings, and even ensures support for Valve's hardware. Oh, and wait till I say that one of the related options even lets you install extra Proton packages without messing with any specialized installers and compatibility tool directories. Simply unbelievable. So generally, if there is an enable option for something, you will pretty much always have a better experience using it. And if there isn't one, it's either not needed, part of Home Manager, or waiting for you to create it. So now, you are ready to go ahead and set some options, save the file, and run the rebuild command. That is the way we do things on NixOS. Just be aware that for some options to take effect, you may need to restart your computer. Also make sure to check out these two commands, they are pretty useful. And most importantly, please keep your files under version control. Git is your friend, so be sure to protect your configuration from accidents, cause you won't believe how easy it is to accidentally undo days or even weeks of configuration with even the most basic human errors. And now, I'd like to thank all the amazing people that support the channel and keep it going, especially all the great monthly supporters, your support is invaluable. And as always, don't forget to check out our Discord server, leave a like or a comment if you enjoyed this video, or subscribe if you are feeling extra generous. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.